as I was taking down some of these wood slats or positioning them a bit apart, I decided that uh, I would put a little insulation between the wood and the outside fiberglass hull. Now I really have to say that it's not critical, not necessary, because Guinevere has always been nice and toasty when it's been cold outside and actually cooler when it's been hot outside. Uh, all, all the wood makes for some good insulation on its own, but I decided I'd go ahead and add a little bit. So I'm, as if you look, you can see the stringers that the uh, wood paneling is attached to, and I measured between them, and they're uh, about 16 inches, 17 inches. 16 and a half, and from top to bottom they're about three foot long. So I bought about a few yards of insulation that I intend to put in there. Uh, I'll cut it to uh, 16 and a half inches wide by three foot long, and I'll just slip them down. I don't have to take the rest of this wood off. Uh, in order to do that, I'll slip it between it. Now, the type of insulation might be interesting. You know, there's all different types. Uh, I don't want to use something like a styrofoam because it makes noise. Uh, it squeaks, you know, when you rub them together. You've had one of those ice chests that uh, sound terrible. They sell a very inexpensive type like this at the uh, Home Depot's, uh, Lowe's, uh, big, big hardware stores. Uh, it is a bubble wrap with foil on both sides. What I've decided to go with is this is a, like a felt in the center with a foil on both sides. Uh, what you're looking at for insulation, there are three things that you want to take into consideration. There's actually four, but three things major that you want to take into consideration when you're insulating either your hull or your icebox uh, refrigerator. And that's uh, radiant, radiation heat. Now that's the type of heat there like you feel on your face when you're outside and you're facing the sun. It could be very cold outside, but it still feels hot because the radiation hits you and warms you up. Now the foil is very, very good at stopping that type of heat transfer. The next type is conduction. Conduction is uh, where the heat migrates along a path. Uh, best example I can give of that is if you take a metal bar and you hold on to one end, you heat the other end, pretty soon it's too hot. You've got to drop it because the heat is conducted along there. Uh, glass is a great insulator for conduction heat. You can hold one end and, of a short piece of glass and literally melt the other end uh, red hot, dripping off, but you can still hold on to it, so that's good. This felt type material in between here is going to work very well for conduction heat. So the the radiant heat is stopped by the uh, foil, conduction stops that, and the last type that you're really worried about is convection. So it's radiant, conduction, convection. Convection is uh, when air moves from one area to another. The problem with the little bubble wrap type is, is they're fairly good, the, the radiant heat stopped, but there are, there's air in those bubbles, and the heat that starts on one side causes the air inside to move from one side to the other and it migrates out. Um, that's basically the three things that I'm worried about. So this will work fairly good in there. And like I said, I'm not looking for super insulation in it. I'm just looking for something to block out most of it. Uh, when we were in the Sea of Cortez, you can see a lot of boats hang those uh, car windshield reflectors down on the side of their boats facing the sun just outboard of their ice boxes or refrigerators trying to keep radiant heat away. Uh, good, good example I just thought of uh, for uh, the foil. Uh, I, see, I hear all kinds of great claims. Oh, this foil is, is only a, a mil thick and, it, and it's like R900 or something, you know. It might be for radiation type heat, but you take that same thin foil like a space blanket, put it in your hand, put an ice cube on top of it. It's, it 
in a second you feel that ice. That's because, well, the foil stops the radiation. It doesn't stop the conduction of the heat. So I want to pack this up, take it to our shoreside facility right now, and uh, cut it into the strips and bring it back and I'll uh, put that in. Now that I've cut the different sections of the insulation to fit between the different supports, it's not such a hard job to come down, loosen some of the top boards. I've already loosened these for doing the uh, chain plates, and then feed the insulation between. the wall and the boards, the outer hull and the boards. You can come back in once it's all the way down. I see it's all the way down here to the bottom now. You can uh, then come back with an X-Acto knife and cut little circles out for the holes to uh, fit the nuts back in. It's not critical to have this over the nuts you can if you want. The minor loss of insulation is um, nothing to even worry about. As I said, the boat is very well insulated to begin with. This is just a little helping hand.